Hey everybody, it's the Old Curiosity Shop. And today's cup of coffee is brought to you by the Anchor Hawking Company. Not sure which pattern this is? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Also, what did I do with that awesome Cuisel lampshade? It's coming up. Well, let's just cut to the chase. I am going to actually keep a hold of this shade and live with it for a little while. What I'd really like to do is get uh, an authentic lamp. The way you see it displayed right now is not really how it was meant to be displayed. Uh, the bridge lamp that it's on is a very inexpensive mass-produced bridge lamp from the mid-1920s. It looks okay, but this particular shade would have originally been on a much fancier style lamp. And I'm actually inserting a few photographs here to show you some of the lamps that uh, it might have come on when it was new. Now the Cuisel company started in 1901 and they ended their production in 1924. So not a very long production. It was expensive glass, it was luxurious glass when it was new, and it did rival the work of Tiffany, Steuben, Lotz, uh, the Duran Glass Company in Vineland. It's art glass. Uh, so we'll do a close up here on it. It's in the Art Nouveau style. This is called the pulled feather design with uh, drizzle. And the colors on it are absolutely beautiful. The iridescence, you just can't beat it. It is signed, uh, and I think maybe peeking through there, you'll see part of the signature. Uh, if not, I'll pop it out of here and show you the signature when uh, at the end of the video. But that's what it looks like. And it was, as you saw, $2.99. And I almost needed an oxygen mask when I saw it. Because for $2.99, I would have never thought I'd find an authentic Cuisel art glass shade uh, in a thrift store. So that was just fantastic. Sometimes this would hang in a cluster and there would be four or five or six shades, but you would also see this particular shade on an individual lamp as pictured. Okay, enough of that. Now let's head over to the kitchen counter and look at today's thrift haul. Well, as promised, we've moved into the kitchen, and here we are with another thrift haul. Most of this stuff came from local thrift shops in my area, and let's dive right in and see what we've got. We're going to start way over here with something that you will remember from last summer, if you've watched me that long. These are Victor mugs. Uh, last summer, I picked up 12 of these and sold them for, under, uh, for over $100. The Victor company made porcelain insulators. And uh, in the 1940s, they started making coffee mugs, mostly for the United States military. These are popular on uh, naval ships because they weigh two pounds each and they do not slide around on the uh, counter. 
These are some heavy mugs. Heavy mugs. Uh, let's turn it upside down. Hold on. Let's turn it upside down again to get you to see the Victor mark on the back. Okay, there it is. Victor. You see that? V-I-C-T-O-R. Now watch out because the Chinese are making these and they're stamping a Y on the end, which is victory, and that's not the same thing. Victory mugs are the imported uh, cheap Chinese, well, I shouldn't say cheap. They are the new mugs made in China. And they're tricky because they actually stamp the Y in very lightly. It's not as deeply embossed, that Y, because they really don't want you to see it. They want you to think it says Victor. So look closely, okay, when you see these, victory, if you're trying to resell these to make any money, leave it. But really nice mugs. This is that sort of classic diner look. 40s, 50s, 60s. Uh, let's see. Six mugs were selling for about $50 last summer. Five mugs. Well, we'll see if I can get 30, 35 bucks for them. Made in Japan in the 1930s. That's a luster teapot. It doesn't have a great deal of value, but I couldn't turn it down because these are always chipped. This one is not chipped, so I just simply had to get it. I'll show you the made in Japan. That's the sort of uh, classic 1930s, one of the classic 1930s marks for uh, made in Japan lusterware. And this would have been in a larger set, cups, saucers, cream and sugar, but there's the teapot. Uh, they were, that whole bundle there was about $3.99. I think that was about $2. The flower frog here was about a dollar. And I don't know if, um, this looks like Weller. It's a pottery flower frog. It dates to the 30s, I believe. It's not marked Weller, so I'm confused about that. Uh, it may not be Weller. It could just be an unmarked piece of Weller. This one is, um... Let's see, this is currently listed. And by the way, folks, almost everything that you see here is listed in my eBay shop. Now, I'll put the link below if you want to go shopping or just check the stuff out. Um, and I will try to let you know what's listed and what's not. If things that you see here today are not listed at the moment, they should be listed in the next couple of days. All right, that's the Decagon pattern by the Cambridge Company. They made elegant depression glass in the 1930s and other decades. An easy pattern to remember because of the 10 sides, hence the name Decagon. And hi -C marked all of its glass with an H inside of a diamond. The Cambridge Company marked their glass with a C inside of a triangle. And I realize that's upside down, but you get the idea. Nice pink elegant depression glass. They will probably sell for shucks, maybe eight dollars each. I'm not sure. This was wonderful right out of the 1940s. Now I'll tell you if you like these plates you better hop on it because I did list these a few days ago. They're on uh, I think the latest bid and these are auctioning right now and I think they're up to twenty nine dollars. So it's a set of one, two, three, four, five, six plates by the Bakerite Company. And these are fantastic. Almost no utensil marks at all. That's a decal. And the red on the edges is almost perfect. So to find six of these with no chips, no cracks, no utensils, utensil marks, and no loss to the red around the rim is super great. There were uh, a lot of kitchen items in the 40s in those colors with uh, fruit patterns on them. So I really like those plates. Yes, they are reproducing these jars back here. I won't pick this one up, but it is an old one. It is marked Anchor Hocking on the bottom. Just a nice utilitarian kitchen. Uh, jar for flour, sugar, so forth. There's a primary bowl set back there. Another one. This this might, might be the last one I purchased. Uh, anyway, that one's in great shape and it came as a set. 
Uh, it wasn't piecemealed together. All of the markings on the bottom date that one from 1945. Uh, it's the early set from 1945 uh, into the early 50s, whenever it was, where they changed the stamp on the bottom. Uh, and I paid $25 for that primary set. The prices are really all over the place with these. And so I won't speculate what it'll what it will bring. That's not currently listed. I'm kind of gonna sit on that for a few minutes. Now I need your help with this because I am stuck. Let's pull this bad boy out. Okay, depression glass, uranium green. Got it. It looks like. Now, let me get my, okay, you, well, you see it's on a foot, right? A little pedestal, a little foot. But if I were to raise my camera up to there, you would say, oh, it's a mixing bowl. I've seen all the mixing bowls from the 30s. Anchor Hawking, Hazel Atlas, uh, oh, fudge. Who am I? Okay, Hazel Atlas, McKee, Jeanette, Anchor Hawking, they all made mixing bowls. And this has a mixing bowl look to it. It's not a mixing bowl. It's ribbed on the outside and smooth on the inside. It has a little bit of a rolled edge here, but I can't find this anywhere. So I don't mind if you guess, but what I really want to know is can somebody actually document what company made this? I would love to know. It has a Hazel Atlas feel to me because of these ribs, but I can't find it anywhere. It was made in a mold. It's got the mold marks here, as you can see, three mold marks that were not polished out. There's another one of the mold marks, and then there's a third over here. And this is a, uh, a bubble inside, not a chip. There's a few straw marks inside. The typical stuff that you see in depression glass. And it's very heavy, very heavy. So I don't think it was a serving bowl because this thing, as I said, it's just extremely heavy and I, I'm guessing it was used as a console bowl or a, a bowl, a fruit bowl or whatever. But who made this bowl? I want to know. Okay. So, uh, if you can, if you've got some kind of documentation out there or you can tell me who made this bowl, I would be grateful. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you breaking news. We have figured it out. I sat down and went through one of my old books that I dug out. I've been holding onto this book for about 25 years. You can see it's all falling apart. It's the great American glass of the roaring 20s in the Depression era uh, by the Wiggins. James and James, oh, I'm sorry, James Maisel and Barry Wiggins. Now, I don't even know if it's still in print. But I did some more digging through this book and found it. It's made by the Indiana Glass Company in the 1920s. Look very carefully. That's the same bowl. Now this one was clear glass and it was decorated cold, painted with orange and black. But you can see same ribs, same little rolled rim, the same style on the foot there. Can you see that at the base? Yep, that's the same bowl. Here are some variations of it with candlesticks. And this was marketed as a console bowl and uh, it could be used as a fruit bowl, flower bowl, just a console bowl. And again, it probably did have candlesticks that went with it. So 1920s Indiana Glass Company. It's nice to be able to put the name of the maker to the bowl. Okay, let me just add an interesting footnote on these big uh, console bowls that were so popular in the very late 20s all through the 30s. Here you see an original advertisement from the mid to late 20s advertising a console bowl. Now notice in the description it lists this as a console set in choice of green or amber, which would have been the fad of the day, the new depression glass colors. And they're advertising it as a 10 inch footed fruit or flower bowl. So they did advertise these for both uses. Either you could put a flower frog in it and have flowers or floating flowers, or actually as a fruit bowl, as you see listed right there. A remarkably pretty set for so low a price, $1.19. 
for your buffet, serving, or dining table. You can't beat that. Here's another original advertisement from the mid-1920s, advertising a richly decorated fruit bowl. Fruit bowl decorated in rose design, tinted in natural colors on either side of glass. Oh, or does, I'd say on underside of glass. Yes. Artistic and beautiful. A handsome piece for your sideboard or dining room table. 39 cents. And that's kind of the old-fashioned, almost pressed glass style there in a fruit bowl from the late 20s. And then finally, I want to show you another original 1920s advertisement for a colonial set. Now, uh, if you went back into the colonial days, you'd be hard-pressed to find something like this in the average colonial home. So there's a lot of artistic liberties here taken in the 20s, but we won't nitpick over that. Now notice this ad says it's an unusually attractive console set in the new pale green shade. Of course, that would be the uranium glass, the green uh, glass that would become so popular during the 1930s. And they're advertising this as a, with a flared rim, a uh, flaring rim flower or fruit bowl and two beautifully designed console low candlesticks. Colonial low candlesticks, rather. Makes an, ex an especially welcome gift. Ornamental for buffet or table. And you can see the price is 98 cents. I want to say thanks to Tam over at Tam's Place, who does some inter interesting thrift haul videos. She purchased a console bowl very similar to this from me a while, a while back, and then just actually showed it in, in one of her hauls. And I told her that it was advertised as colonial, and I wanted her to see this, so I hope she's watching. Maybe she can find the matching candlesticks. All right, that's everything and more that you ever wanted to know about these console bowls. Now back to the haul. So I'm not going to do anything with it until I find that out. This is also Hazel Atlas, and it's called the Diamond optic pattern, a little juice glass. Their blue was referred to as Ritz blue. Cobalt blue is the generic name for that color blue, but they called it Ritz. Speaking of Ritz, we'll move over here. You saw me thrift these in my last shop along video. I did get them. They are the uh, Hazel Atlas thin ribbed. I couldn't think of what the rib was called. Uh, duh. 5 inch thin ribbed juice glasses and these don't sell for a great deal uh, but they are popular in Ritz Blue or were and we'll see if these sell for oh I don't know maybe $12 or so for the three the cup of coffee that I started off with is was in one of these actually the 11th one of these I bought 11 cups and saucers 10 are for sale and one I'm keeping now this set came with four cereal, um, sorry, four flat soup bowls. And I think uh, somewhere around here I have two more extra saucers. Collectors call this bubble. I think Anchor Hawking called it provincial. I think that's right if my memory serves. And I also think it was made from 1940 to 1965. So. A nice long run, 25 years worth of uh, sapphire blue bubble. And it's still a popular pattern. So I did not pay a whole lot for this glass. I think, well, it was all bundled up differently. I know I didn't pay more than $12 for all of it. And uh, I think I've got the cups and saucers broken up into two lots, five cups and saucers, five cups and saucers, and then another, another sale for the soup bowls. So those are all currently also available. Here is a Bakelite Art Deco poker chip and playing card uh, caddy, which probably won't sell for much, but I love Bakelite and I love the Art Deco design of the 1930s, so I had to get it. What do you think? It came, the, you know, the chips were already in it and so was this deck of cards, so. The cards and the chips may not be as old as the caddy, but it has a really nice deco design to it. Uh, let's see, where are we gonna go now? Let's, what am I, oh, well, let's go back to Hazel Atlas again. That's the Gay Rainbow Milk Pitcher. There were four of them, blue, 
let me see, blue, yellow, green, and red, I think. And these came, it was a premium that you got with uh, Kix cereal. Uh, I think you, you either had to save box tops or it came in the box of kits, kicks. I think you maybe had to send in box tops or something. I'll, I'll insert a photograph here and you can see. And uh, it's their, either their platinite or their milk glass. And then it's a fired on color. This one's in really good shape. And actually, if you collect uh, all four of these, they'll sell for maybe 50 or $60. <clears throat> Individually, it's maybe an eight to ten dollar uh, milk pitcher. Now, it could be used for cream, uh, but they did not make sugar bowls to match. These were really considered uh, milk pitchers for your uh, breakfast table because it's it's really too big for a creamer. You can see it's almost as big as this coffee pot is over here. I like that little guy. Here's an Art Deco clock made by the Lux Clock Company. And it dates again to the 30s. I paid $1.99 for it. It's currently not working, but I have already ordered a spring. And I'll be getting inside, replacing the spring, and then we can wind it up and you'll hear it tick, 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 tick. I am so attracted to the 1930s design that I'm keeping this guy. All right, let's turn you around. Another made in Japan piece here is a little dresser tray thing. It would hold uh, powder or you could put rings in it or other kinds of trinkets on a woman's dresser. And it says, also it's a made in Japan piece from the 30s. Probably came with several other pieces uh, for a complete dresser set, but that's all that's left. All right, two more things to talk about and we're all finished. Let's go to this right here. It's a cocktail set. Now, those of you with real sharp eyes will realize that uh, they don't all match. Look closely. The two red ones, the stems are different and the glass is different. See that? Okay, but I found them all together. So someone just sort of piecemealed together some different designs and that's okay. That's the cocktail shaker right there with its Bakelite handle and you can see my reflection in it. I'm glad I'm not filming in the nude. Uh, the glass was made by, there were several of the depression companies who made the glass. Usually the chrome is uh, Farber Brothers. I don't remember if these are marked on the bottom or not. Obviously made after 1933 when Prohibition was out the window and we all started making cocktails. This is the Art Deco 30s. Glamorous. I think I might have to keep a hold of this and live with it for a while because it is beautiful Art Deco chrome. And finally back here is a tin sweet peach snuff sign. It's not a reproduction, it's the real thing. Get it out of there. Uh, I'm not going to clean it. Well, I wiped it off, but I would not want to over polish it or over clean it. I like sort of the little scuffs and stain marks on it. It shows honest wear, as you can see. This probably hung in a gas station or some small store somewhere. I think peach snuff might still be uh, manufactured. Uh, so I was really excited when I saw this. I paid $15 for it and you know old signs do very well. This I think dates to the 30s. I don't know its value. They reproduced a lot of these things in the 80s, but this is the real thing as far as I can tell. Pretty certain about that. And I would expect, well, I don't know. It's in awesome condition for a tin sign. So it's got to be worth at least $50 up, upwards. A lot of these tin signs can go for quite a bit of money, but I think that's when you get into uh, 
some of the oil companies and the cigarette companies and the gas companies and Coca-Cola and that kind of thing. But wonderful piece from the 1930s. Let's back up and make sure we've got it all. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. And if you are a new subscriber, welcome. I'm glad you found me. Thank you for your comments. I, I read all of them. I don't always get a chance to give a long answer, but I read them and I appreciate it. Remember, I need some help on that green depression piece back there. So if you know who made it, please let me know in the comments below. Also, uh, most of these things are for sale in my eBay shop. The link is below. And I pretty much specialize in the 1920s into the early 60s. So if that's your era and you're looking for anything specific, let me know. I'll keep my eyes open. All right, it's Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.